Okay, today we're going to be building a sieve of Eratosthenes, which uh, can be used to print out the prime numbers less than a given number. Uh, it's a pretty elegant and uh, efficient prime number generator. It's not really a generator, but it's really a detector um, and may, may come in useful in later projects. So we're going to build it. Okay, so you can see that I've already set up my project and I have a sort of rough skeleton here. I've imported my scanner because we're going to get some user input as usual. So let's, and the user input that we're going to get is the ceiling, basically the maximum um, possible prime number that we're going to get. We're going to look for all the num prime numbers less than, less than that number, that number n. Okay, so let's get that number from the user. Sometimes I'll call it the ceiling. Okay, so now that we have n, we're going to the, the basically the idea of the sieve is we're going to is we're going to go through and cross out uh, pop candidate prime numbers, and the way we're going to do that do that is have a numbers array. So we're going to init our numbers array where and this numbers array is going to have a is going to be a boolean type, so it only takes values true or false. True denotes primality. Okay, so look at the syntax here. So Boolean, like that, that tells us that tells Java that we're going to be making an array. The array is going to be called is prime. We're going to be new Boolean, and it's going to be of size n. So this basically makes an array of n variables all sort of strung together in a block of memory. And each variable is either true or false. Okay, and you'll see how to use this in a little bit. So now we're going to init all of, initialize all of these um, all of these values to true because normally when you initialize a boolean, it by default initializes to false. So let's set them to true. So well, i equals one, and actually. We know that is prime. So is prime zero. This actually represents corresponds to the number one, just because we're going to make it do that. And and so we're, we know that one is not is not prime. Um, so we're going to start. So basically, the number is the index plus one that that this uh, encodes here. So we're going to start. There, let's say, uh, well, i is less than or equal to n. Actually, no, just less than n. i plus plus. We're going to say is prime i equals true, right? So we're going to start assuming all of the numbers are prime. Of course, we know this isn't true, but this is how we're going to start, and then we're going to sort of go through and switch many, most of these flags to false. So now. We're going to do the sieving part, so check every number greater than or equal to 2 for primality. So since we're doing greater than or equal to 2, say since i equals 2, and actually let's, let's have a different, um, let's make this a different index so we don't confuse ourselves between these two loops because we're going to use them just very subtly differently. Okay, and so we're going to say while well, i is less than 2, and we want i less than or equal to n. So here note that this i is going to denote the actual number, not the index into our is prime. Well, we're going to subtract 1 from i to index into is prime. i plus plus. Okay. So now 
we know that i is prime if it hasn't been sort of crossed off yet, right? So starting with i equals two, since you know since we start there, we know that two is prime. So that we check to see if it's been crossed off by looking at is prime, and here's where we say we index into i minus one. So i i is two here, so i minus one is really the index one. Um, which is the second element of this array. Um, here, this is the, the index zero is the first element. So we want to check if this is basically if this is true. Right? But we actually are gonna just do a little sh bit of shorthand because this is in itself a Boolean value, so we don't even have to check. We're just if this whole thing is true, then this expression is true. So if this is true, then we have a prime number. So let's print it out. OK, cool. Now we have to go up and cross off all of the subsequent multiples of this prime. So for example, dealing with 2, we need to then cross off 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and on and on and on, up until we hit up until n. And that's what that's where the sieving part comes in, is basically once you have a prime number, then you cross out all of the other multiples of that of that number. Um, so let's just note that. So we're gonna cross off all the subset. Okay, so we're going to say for int j equals, now we're going to start it at 2 times i, right? So that's basically, so we have, that's basically the next multiple of i after i itself. And we're going to go until j is less than or equal to n. And we're going to, we're going to, now before we've just been using, we would be, we've just been using this plus plus operator, but in this increment or incremental part, increment in this last part of the loop, you can really have whatever you want. So we're going to say j plus equals i. So first it's going to be 2i, then it's going to be 3i, then 4i, then 5i, and on and on and on. Okay. So we're going to do that. And all we're going to say is is prime j minus 1, remember we have to subtract 1 to index into it, equals false. Right? We're, this is just our crossing it off. Okay? And actually, that's it. Um, now, there's a, there's a slight interesting thing here. Uh, we can actually make this more efficient. So instead of having this, what we can have is and just copy that. We're not going to start at 2 times i, we're going to start at i squared or i times i. And I'm going to let you, so this is more efficient. I'm going to let you think about why this still does the same thing we're um, but as this other loop, but why it's more efficient. So just think about that. Um, hopefully it'll come to you. Just try it out with a couple examples if you, if you, if you can't, can't get it right away. Um, okay, so let's test this out. All right, so we just put in something easy, twenty like twenty five, and here we see that we have we're getting two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty three, and these are indeed the prime numbers less than twenty five. Um, running it again with a larger number. Obviously, you know, it gives the same thing. And, and really, you can run this for as long, as large a number as, as you want. Just keep in mind, though, that you have to basically make an array of that number. So you can't, for example, run this with an array of, of maybe uh, like a thousand billion. Um, like find all the numbers, all, all of the numbers less than... 10 to the 12, um, 
you can't do that because that just that amount you just can't make an array that big in, in normal computer memory. Um, so that's what ultimately this you know you can't just keep on generating primes you know forever. Um, otherwise, it would be it would be too easy. But uh, this is a nice way to generate a small number of primes, and we'll actually we'll come back to this uh, this method in in future projects actually. Okay, so that's it for today, and uh, good luck in your future projects.